more part of the offense in the game? Uh, well, I'm not sure it freed him up to be any more part of the offense. He still played at the at the point primarily the entire game. Um, but you know, the one thing Corey does bring a defensive mentality uh, to the starting lineup, which is uh, something I think that we needed. Um, also, you know, just gave us a little fr more freedom in the rotation in terms of guys coming off the bench, being able to play, you know, some multiple positions. So I thought it was effective. I thought Corey's played well. Uh, I thought he earned that, uh, earned it not only in his performance during games, but in practice as well. And I think it was funny. I thought it was uh, Trey Golden's best defensive performance of the season. He was really dialed in in terms of the coverages and the things that we needed to do. And like so often happens, he was, you know, exceptional on offense as well. Coach, talk about four games in 10 days. How do you get your team ready for that? For well, teams? yeah, you, you, there's a mental approach that you have to uh, understand too, because, you know, our guys, you know, more than physical fatigue, there's a mental fatigue. And it's not just four games in 10 days. It's who we play and where we play them and different things like that. So you have to make sure, I always want a fresher team uh, than one that maybe knows you know every single nuance of every single play that the opposing team runs because if we play with great energy and we communicate then we'll cover most everything pretty well uh, but if you don't have energy if you don't have um, you know the the, the the passion that you need and sometimes playing that amount of games can can dwindle that you need to make sure that you, the guys are ready to go and this time of year it's a push with less than 15 games left, it's a push this time. Yeah, you know, and they, our guys understand that, you know, um, you know, in terms of this specific team, games are running out, time is running out, where, you know, you can play on other teams, but you'll never play on the same team, and this is the last time all these guys will be together. So you talk about that stuff because these guys have been through a lot, especially the seniors, and you want to make sure that we continue to improve and play um, over a 40-minute span the way uh, – you know, that we want Georgia Tech to play. Like a lot of teams in the ACC, North Carolina State has had their ups and downs throughout the year. What do you see from them right now? Well, you know, obviously very highly talented team, young in a lot of spots. Um, one of the most dynamic scorers in the conference in T.J. Warren, a guy who I just have an unbelievable amount of respect for. And I think it starts with, with Mark and, and his emphasis on T.J. getting in great shape, changing his body, and really elevating his game from his freshman year to his sophomore year, um, you know that starts at the top, and and then you give credit to T.J. Warren for the fact that in this day and age it's hard to get guys to understand that and to actually go out there and do it, and he's done it, and he's carried them in a lot of instances. So, um, you know, with with their perimeter quickness and their interior size, uh, they're a team that because you know they there's the changeover with the guys they lost. Their only issue is consistency, and you know that, that's what you battle sometimes when you're playing the young, you know, younger guys, or you're trying to get things back on track. And I know you talked a little bit about Trey. Can you just elaborate a little bit more on what he means to this team and, and what he brings on the court? Well, you know, the, the one thing it, it, he's in a in a strange situation where he brings great experience, great game experience, but lacks the experience within our system. And you got to give the kid credit because he's done a great job of picking stuff up and understanding and really buying into what we're all about um, and what the team's all about and how we do things. Uh, he, the, 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 the biggest credit and the, the biggest compliment I can give him is he comes every single day to work, never has a bad practice. And that usually transforms itself to good performances, and that's exactly what you've seen. It sounds like, from what you said after a couple of games, that you're in his ear a little bit, encouraging him to take the, the big shots and be the be the senior, I guess. Yeah, you know, it, it, there's times, you know, it, it's interesting because throughout 11 years of coaching, I think point guards in our system have led us in scoring maybe seven out of the 11 years. Uh, and so I don't mind a point guard that, you know, can score and he can do that. He has the ball in his hands a lot, a lot of decisions. A lot of the flow for us as a team, you know, starts with him. And uh, you never want that position to be unaggressive. And uh, he's done a good job of understanding where the shots are coming from, where plays are being made. He's making good plays. And sometimes the assist total gets skewed because he's making the pass that leads to the pass that gets the basket. You know, the quick reversal or the throwback to a big guy who now, you know, makes another pass. 
So he's done a really good job of helping our, when we're good and really good, that's, that's you know that he's on top of his game. In any of your recent teams, have you had, have you had a team that shot the ball like, like your team did at the beginning of the game against uh, Boston College? Well, you know, you coach long enough, you, you, you have those type of shooting nights, you know what I mean? You just hope they come a lot more often. Uh, you know, and, and um, I thought our, our, our defense in that first half was great, and then when you play that kind of defense and you make those shots, the good thing for me is uh, our offense generated really good looks. And even in the lull in the second half where we didn't score as many points, we still you know, three out of every four possessions, we're getting good looks at the basket. Um, you know, Trey missed two shots similar to the one he made off the backboard to put us up by three. He, you know, we missed a couple threes similar to the three that he hit. You know, so you just, you know, with us, uh, we just need to make sure that we're creating high quality looks. And what your hope is that over a 40 minute span, you're gonna make enough of those. And when you don't, you, that's when you have to rely on your defense and your, and your rebound. I know I've asked you before about you know, having a pretty big lead and then dwindling and going away. Is there something to be encouraged by the fact that against Notre Dame, you lost it, but you took it back, and then against Boston College, and went down to one? Or well, I, I think sometimes that is a little overrated in terms of trying to psychologically analyze why those things happen. I think the main reason it happened is because you're playing good teams, and good teams aren't going to, you know, and, and if we're fairly evenly matched, there's ebbs and flows to games. Um, and I think you see that. I think you see that you know, in, in a lot of the games in, in our league. Um, unless a team is you know, completely superior or um, the other team is just really bad that day, um, you know, 10, 12, 15 point lead quickly and easily can get down to seven, six, five, four, three, or two. Right. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so, Sometimes what ends up happening is the team doesn't get the credit for building that lead. They only get the blame for losing it, you know. So um, the one thing that, again, is a big key for us in those, in those times is what do we, what's our identity and, and what are we going to be able to rely on. Uh, and the, the best part for me in that game is we got some key defensive stops when we needed them, you know, when we needed them. And we got them both out of the zone and out of the man. And we came up with key rebounds. And that was missing in the Pittsburgh game. We got good stops when we needed them. We just didn't get the rebound. Uh, you know, it was missing at times in the, in the Duke game as well. Uh, you know, so those are the things that you look at. Those are the things that you talk about with, with, with the team. Um, again, you know, offensively, you always look at is, is there shots being generated that are makeable shots by your team? And again, the other team is playing defense too, so you know you got to take that into consideration. So, um, you know, we have shown, you know, again I said last week, one of the biggest keys in when you're rebuilding a program, and when you're rebuilding a program in a league like the ACC, you have to be resilient, not only game to game, but within games. And I thought we showed that on Tuesday night. It's interesting what you said about you know getting credit. I think I was looking at Notre Dame, the lead you had on the like was 15 was the largest that any team had taken on at any like at any point in the game of the season, which I guess there's something about, you know, the way you're able to create shots. Right. And 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 you know, again, you gotta give Notre Dame credit for, you know, they, they never panic. That's a team okay. that never panicked. You look at and and that's when sometimes when I talk about programs like Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, Syracuse, do those teams you don't you know, those teams usually hold those leads and those teams are usually the teams that are able to come back. You know, I think Syracuse against Boston College was down 12, 13, 14 points maybe in the second half. I don't know exactly how big it got. And they just kept doing what they do. And they know that over 40 minutes, for the most part, it's going to be pretty successful.